Hey, this is Dr. K from iMedical School here to talk about vitamin D deficiency. Make sure to check out our other videos on our YouTube channel, iMedical School. All right, let's talk about vitamin D deficiency. You may have heard about the importance of vitamin D from a friend, the news, or even your doctor, but you may not understand why vitamin D is so important. Well, today we will talk about vitamin D and why you should even care about vitamin D deficiency. Let's begin by talking about what is vitamin D. Vitamin D is a fat-soluble vitamin that is absorbed from the gastrointestinal tract, but can also be produced in our skin with the aid of sunlight. Let's first take a look at vitamin D metabolism. Our two main sources of, sources of vitamin D are from our diet and our skin. Our GI tract absorbs vitamin D from foods like eggs, fish, mushrooms, and dairy products. The vitamin D absorbed is called cholecalciferol. In addition, our skin can play a role in the creation of vitamin D. Sunlight, and specifically ultraviolet light, aids in the conversion of 7-dehydrocholesterol to cholecalciferol. Keep in mind, cholecalciferol is an inactive form of vitamin D. Cholecalciferol is converted to 25-hydroxycholecalciferol by the liver. Now, the job of vitamin D is to help regulate calcium and bone metabolism. When calcium and phosphate, which are needed for strengthening and building bones, are low in the body, vitamin D can increase the absorption into the body. The kidney can sense the levels of calcium and phosphorus in the blood, and if they are low, the kidneys will convert 25-hydroxycholecalciferol to 125-hydroxycholecalciferol, which is the active form of vitamin D. On the other hand, if the levels of calcium and phosphorus are within normal ranges, then the 25 cholecalciferol is converted to 24 25 hydroxycholecalciferol, an inactive form. Now that we understand how vitamin D is created and regulated in the body, so what? What does vitamin D mean for my everyday life? Well, as we stated, vitamin D is involved in the regulation of calcium and phosphorus, as well as a new bone formation in the body. Interestingly enough, studies have shown that vitamin D deficiency leads to increased falls in the elderly. There's also data to suggest that vitamin D is helpful with our metabolism, but this data is not as strong. In the end, maintaining proper levels of vitamin D will help you keep your bones strong and prevent inadvertent fractures from falls. So who's at risk for vitamin D deficiency? Vitamin D deficiency occurs mainly due to a lack of sun exposure, such as having an indoor job, poor diet, or malabsorption. The elderly are commonly at risk for vitamin D deficiency, as well as those who are hospitalized or spend most of their day indoors. In addition, those with dark skin are also at higher risk of vitamin D deficiency, as they do not absorb UV light as much as those with fairer skin. How is vitamin D deficiency checked? Well, we check vitamin D levels by testing for 25-hydroxy vitamin D in the blood. Now, there remains controversy over what levels are considered adequate. Many experts believe that the minimum vitamin D level is about 20 nanograms per milliliter, while others believe about 30 nanograms per milliliter is the minimum cutoff. Either way, if you're found to be vitamin D deficient, then your doctor will likely give you supplemental vitamin D. Vitamin D supplementation comes in two forms, cholecalciferol and ergocalciferol. Both these forms are inactive and must be converted by the body to the active form. Studies have looked at both these forms and have found that cholecalciferol is more effective at increasing vitamin D levels. But it was unclear from these studies whether there was any clinical significance to cholecalciferol being more effective at increasing levels. For most people, we recommend 600 to 800 international units per day through their diet or supplementation. For those individuals at high risk for vitamin D deficiency with levels less than 20, we usually place these patients on a high-dose vitamin D supplementation of 50,000 units, one tablet once a week for eight weeks, then recheck their levels. If they respond well, then we switch them to a vitamin D over-the-counter supplement to meet their daily requirements. If they do not respond well, we need to consider if they have a malabsorption problem that could be preventing supplementation from working, or if they're even taking their pills. If malabsorption and compliance are not issues, then we can continue with high dose supplementation until we reach an optimal 25 hydroxy vitamin D level. Well, that was a review of vitamin D deficiency. Remember, vitamin D is absorbed from your diet and skin with the purpose of regulating calcium and phosphorus, as well as enhancing bone strength. It's important to make sure you get some 
sun this summer to help with the adequate levels of vitamin D. Make sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. This is Dr. K from iMedical School, and I'll see you next time.